Hello and welcome to another Tinkercad tutorial or top tip. Today we're going to look at a relatively new feature of Tinkercad, which I think personally makes it a lot easier for um, learners, especially those in primary schools, um, especially the younger ones, to uh, be able to use Tinkercad and create models. So what I've got here is some basic components for making a chair of sorts. So we've got our four legs. I've got my seat got my backrest and these cylinders here are going to go in the middle, in between. But at the moment, all I've done is I managed to put them on the floor and make them the shapes I would like. I say the floor, I mean the work plate. So how we do that is we drag them over and there you go. And they always go onto the work plate. There's a few things um, that have changed with the cruise tool. <laughs> so I've got my four legs there and where I want them to be. And I want this on top. Now the way of doing it before, and you still can, is by this black triangle, which at times, especially if it's a touch screen, it can be quite fiddly for um, learners or even um, experienced people to, to touch and drag with their finger. So you can move it up and down there and you can try and make sure it's the right level. Um, I can move it over and see if it's in the right place, but it's a bit fiddly. So what I want to do instead is while I've selected my seat, I then go up to this magnet tool. Or I could use, as it says, the green there is the shortcut and the letter C. When I click on that, it gives me some points that I can use, nine points. And I can select which one I want to use. Um, and that will be the part that will attach to whatever object I want it to attach to. So for example, I want to attach this corner to the top of this cylinder here. So I'm going to select that one. And as I drag it over, you'll see that it starts rotating and almost like it sticks itself to whatever, whatever surface um, I'm looking at. And then what I want to do is I want to attach it there. And there we go. And what I can do from here is I can then move it over a bit. I'll use my arrow keys for that. Just central it. But that made it a lot easier for me to get that on top instead of having to move it up and down. So there we go. I've now got uh, my seat on my legs. And now I've got to add these two. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll use press C this time on my keyboard. And I want, I can choose the middle for this one because I don't mind which one it is. I'll zoom in and I'll drag over. Just closer. And we'll do the same thing again. And this one, I'm going to want up here. That's fine there. I might want to have it slightly over to the corner so I could choose to move it over a bit. And then we've got, and this green bit is just your work plane um, so you can work on it. So if I wanted it um, <clears throat> on the side, I'll show you the other one. I can change the direction of the work plane. So there you go, it's at the back there. I'll leave a little bit of a gap back there, that's okay. I'm gonna do the same for the other one. So again, select the object, click on the magnet, select what area of the base of the shape you want to move, or object, sorry, and then click and drag it over. And that has taken a lot less time than it would have if I was um, doing it the older way or fusing that triangle lifting its right height and moving it over. Then once to get these, now I've turned these cylinders on their side, but it doesn't change where the work plane is. Tinkercad still sees the work plane as whatever the, bo the, the bottom of the object was when it was um, first inserted into the, um, the work plane. So that's why it's up here and not along the bottom. Well, you could get it along the bottom if you select it but the default is on the side. And that's perfect for me because I want to add them in between these two um, cuboids here. So select the middle one and I bring it over and there we go. Now I made it a bit long and that's okay. So again, because the work plane is now not going across the bottom, it's now going up and down, um, I can still move and change the shape of the height um, easily. And I'll do the same for the other two. So if I 
Click magnet. And we're going to go the same. We're going to do the opposite side this time. Roughly about there. Again, if it's not exact, that's okay. I'll make it shorter. Just my arrow keys to move it going backwards. Left and right. And the last one, the same thing. Choose the surface I want it to be on. What part is to touch it? And it, I'm using my left and right arrow keys, but it's moving it forwards and backwards. And that's because the work plane again is a different direction. And there you have it. I've now quickly, and it would take children a lot less time to do it as well, have been able to make this chair. And then, as I've shown in um, another video, group it together. So there's my chair. And if I want to, I can group it all together. Make sure it stays in one place. And nothing um, will fall off. And there we have it. So there's my chair. Done a lot easier and quicker than it would have been before. Again, to show you if I had in, uh, another shape, like a cone. And I wanted the cone to be on top. Instead of me trying to fiddle around with having to go up and across and try and get the right accent of doing that, changing the shape. I can quite easily just press or click C, choose this bit and um, put it wherever I want, the one on top there. There we go. My chair has a hat. And that's how we use the cruise tool. It's a brilliant tool. I think it's going to really help a lot of people um, learn and use SingerCAD and it makes it a lot more accessible. So thank you very much for watching and until next time. Bye.